Have you ever looked at a website and wondered what it looked like maybe five years ago? Or you simply want to make sense of a subdomain that you have found and kind of wanted to understand what it looked like in the past? Well, don't worry. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to look that up, but also talk about the reasons why you should look at URLs in the archives when it comes down to doing your bug bounty hunting or pen test. But before we do that, you gotta do me a favor. You gotta drop me a comment and let me know, do you want me to make a lab on this video where I make a lab where you have to hack into a website like a CTF using this method? So maybe just drop me a comment saying CTF and I'll work on making a lab that does exactly this. But let's jump into it really quickly. As you can see on my screen right here, we can type in any website. I'm gonna start with my own website, for example. I'm gonna look at nahomsec.com and you can see that since 2014, when I started this website, I can actually bring it up and look at what it looked like, for example, on June 25th on this specific time and date. And as you can see, it's gonna bring up all of my old write-ups and I can actually access every single one of them and read them as they still exist. It also has all the screenshots, all of my notes, and everything that I had found for the specific vulnerabilities. This is really interesting because it is not breaking anything and it looks like it's just taking a snapshot of that website at that point of time and just putting it on their storage you can just access that at any time we can also go back here and look at a later date which is probably when i did my website in 2022 i'm just going to click on this one december 7th and we can see this one is more of the up-to-date version of what i have today maybe the content here is a little bit different than what it is today but you can see the difference it brings up these different snapshots of the website and it has all the exact functionality within it. But how is that related to bug bounty hunting? How can you abuse this to find vulnerabilities? Well, there is a little trick to this and you can see right here, for example, if I go and right click into the screen or type in view source for this page, you can also see that all of the JavaScript files and all these different assets for my website are being put on archive.org and it's always going to be accessible within that web ID, for example, 2022, 12, 07, which is the date and probably the time of the snapshot, and I can always browse them. So as a hacker, if you're looking at a website, this is a gold mine, especially if you find a site that's been developed over time, you can feed it to archives.org and have it come up with JavaScript files that have been developed five years ago and see if any of those old functionalities that have been removed from the UI itself are still accessible directly. So a good example of it would be maybe you find a JavaScript file that has some sort of an API in there. And within that API, it maybe does an old API version or another domain that could leak all the users where typically it wouldn't be accessible within the UI or the current JavaScript files that is available to you. A lot of this is kind of manual. I'm gonna talk about tooling in just a bit, but there's also another thing you can do with a web archives database and that is you can actually pull a list of domains and subdomains for each website and also look at what historic data is available and maybe sometimes you find an ip address where you can match a host for which you can do a virtual host scan if you don't know how that works there's a video for it up here you can click right here and go watch it but you can also get a list of urls for an ip address that belongs to a company and maybe you can guess the v host that is no longer there by just having this data that's been pulled out of web archives. So for this video, like I mentioned, I don't have a lab, but I do wanna kind of talk about the tooling that comes with it. Maybe you can use these tools and tell me what you think of them. The first one is get all URLs by Corbin. You have to kind of rename this sometimes depending on what your files are like. Mine is just get all URLs. Usually this is how you access it is G-A-U, but I've renamed mine to get all URLs. And all I'm gonna do here is type in maybe nahomsec.com and see what URL it comes back with. And you can see all of my old WordPress stuff is in here all the way through all the recent ones that I have done when I redid my website and changed it. Those are all going to be listed as well. So you can see right here, I had some embedded files, for example, that's on my write-ups and so on. This isn't the greatest example because this website is no longer accessible in the format that it is. And it's only giving me stuff on www in my root domain, but let's try something different. For example, maybe we can type in something like netflix.com this one is going to take a while but you can see it's going to bring up stuff like www ww2 and it has all these different endpoints where it could be accessible or may not be accessible but you can look at it but you have to be really good at sifting through these you can do a sort unique maybe for example so only the unique stuff comes out and also if you don't want to have something like www in there you can do a grab fee 
where it excludes the www subdomain this is going to take a while for it to run i'll bring it back in just a sec but that is an option get all urls it's available on github it is free and it just hits web archives and pulls all the endpoints all the domains all the subdomains available for it and so it's going to print them all at random you just have to sift through it and find them the difference is if you do this with a tool for example for get all urls here you don't have a visual which as a hacker you probably don't need to have the visuals but going through the website itself and going to web archives and typing it in is going to give you a full example of the site where it's loaded in front of you it can do whatever you want to it i personally like to go to archives.org especially if i have a subdomain that i don't know what the functionality is for and type it into the website first before i feed it to another tool and that's because i want to kind of get a feel of what the website was was there content here before was there something that has changed has this been developed over time and so on so i do that first before i use a tool like get all urls so as you can see here this is done we got rid of all the www stuff but you can see if i go in and look for api there are some api calls that may be actually old maybe they're new who knows that are also available this obviously isn't the greatest example but i know that i've been really cool vulnerabilities that i found within just having these api calls or just sifting through old javascript files that have helped me score a bounty your other option that you have is a tool similar to get our urls this one is by tom nom nom and this one is called wayback urls and you can do the same thing you can do echo www.netflix dot com and you can feed it to wayback urls and it's going to do something very similar to it it's going to print all those urls as well the two tools are very very similar there's been times where i've done both what i like to do sometimes is i would echo a specific url not something like www that's very very large and very broad but what i would do is maybe something like an api dev that i find something really unique I will feed it into both, drop all of the results into a text file, do a sort unique, so all the unique endpoints are visible. Maybe I'll grab some of the garbage that I see in my results and then go through it all at once. So you can run both. Maybe it's an overkill. I'm not sure, but I've done it. It's been helpful. And you can see here, for example, with Tom Nom Nom's tool, I'm seeing more subdomain tools versus when we did Gao or get all URLs, it was giving me a lot of data based on that specific domain that I gave it. And you can see right here, I've given it specifically www.netflix and not netflix.com. But with way back URLs with Tom Nom Nom, it's giving us a lot of different domains. For example, this one that you can see, it's just a random API on the API global domain. That's just giving us an endpoint. It says, Hey, this is a landing URL. Maybe you can mess around with it and find a vulnerability within it. But I kind of want to show you that it is a really good place to do recon and just find content, whether you are looking for an asset that you can't make sense of, or just looking for extra content to hack on because you can't find an endpoint or anything interesting on a subdomain. All right, that's it. I think this is a really good intro on using Wayback URLs or just using the archive.org website to kind of understand what it does. I want to make a part two, but that all solely relies on you to drop me a comment, whether you say CTF or a part two that I can make a lab and make another video on this topic. All right, that's it. If you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that like button and also subscribe and become a Nahomi. Also, if you enjoy the content on this channel and you want to support it, you can also subscribe for $5 and become a supporter of the channel. All right, that's it. I'll see you all in next week's video. Peace.